Hi, good evening and welcome. Uh, this is SingUp's uh, Facebook Live event. Um, we're here this evening to talk to you about what it means to be a singing school. Uh, I'm Michelle James and I'm CEO of SingUp. And I'm joined this evening by Amanda Bennett, who is a head teacher of Seton Sluice First School. Uh, and she leads the singing right across the school, even though she's the head teacher, which I think is great. Um, she started off working towards a, a Sing Up Gold Award as a year four class teacher in her school within the role as deputy head. And the school is now a platinum uh, singing school. Um, and also with me is Bethan Gill, uh, who's assistant head at John Scare Primary. Uh, and she also leads the singing uh, as part of the wider music that happens at their school. Um, they were invited to apply for and achieved a Platinum Sing Up Award in 2008. Um, and when they started that singing journey, she was an advanced skills teacher for music. Um, just a few, uh, few things to say. So uh, you're welcome to send us questions at any point during this informal chat that we're having. Um, by the magic of uh, Facebook Messenger, they will arrive on my phone uh, and I will try and um, incorporate them and, and uh, ask Amanda and Bethan uh, if they can help me answer them as we go. Uh, if not, you can always email us afterwards. Um, so in order to send us the questions, you just need to comment on the video um, with any thoughts that you've got. So what we're here to talk about is uh, what it means to be a singing school. And uh, a singing school is a concept that uh, uh, Sing Up has been uh, thinking about and talking about for, for many years. We've been going for uh, 11 years now. And really, um, the idea ever since we were first funded to run the National Singing Programme was that we wanted every school to be a singing school, which to us means that every child gets the opportunity to sing every day as a normal part of school life. It's absolutely built into the culture of the school. Singing happens right, right across the school day, it happens in every space in the school, uh, on the school premises. All teachers are involved, it's absolutely kind of um, woven throughout the culture of the school. And the reason we wanted it to, to be like that is because we felt it was really important that a school uh, that's a singing school doesn't just have a school choir. School choirs are great, but it's really important that every child gets a chance to sing. And it's not always about formal singing, it can be just singing in the classroom um, to aid learning in all kinds of subjects. It can be singing as part of music, of course, because it really helps develop musicianship skills. It can also be singing routine songs, which is really helpful for you know building routine into the school day, uh, helps with behavioral issue, issues, all that kind of thing, or even just singing in the playground. Um, so we, when we're talking about singing and a singing school, we're talking about all those different contexts for singing. Uh, we've recently uh, decided to, to put all that methodology and all that thinking into a book, um, which has actually just come out this week. Uh, it's called The Singing School Handbook, um, and, uh, and I've written it with the help of uh, colleagues here at Sing Up, but also of uh, vocal leaders and specialists from, from uh, all, all over the place who've, uh, who've helped contribute really valuable content to it. Um, the book is all about uh, supporting you, the vocal leader, uh, to take your school on a singing school journey. So the idea is you, you start off where you are, uh, where your singing is right now, um, however rudimentary it is, or even if there's no singing happening in your school. You start off for where you are and you make a plan for how you're going to improve the quality range and reach of singing that's happening in your school uh, and take your school on that journey. And it's all about how you can influence um, your colleagues, the senior leadership team, governors, etc., to support you on that journey, and indeed how you really galvanise uh, the whole school community to get behind that vision. Uh, so it's got chapters on um, how how to become a what well, why to become a singing school to start with, um, how to embark on your singing school journey, and then it's got um, a chapter on vocal health, uh, which also touches on some basic elements of vocal technique. Uh, it's got a chapter on vocal leadership where we talk about the 10 principles of good quality vocal leadership. Um, it's got a chapter on singing across the school day, week, year and beyond. So the idea of singing happening all the time in school. It's got a chapter on um, inclusive singing for special educational needs and disabilities. Uh, a chapter on teaching music through singing because singing is so fantastic for developing musicianship skills with your pupils. Uh, a chapter on starting and developing choirs. 
and um, and then a chapter on making progress and improving singing which i was really keen that we include um because it can sometimes be overlooked in the enthusiasm to just get everyone singing um the idea of then starting to think about the quality of the singing the sound you're making whether you're singing in tune whether it's in time how to improve that how to really foster some really great singing skills and musicianship skills among your young pupils uh, is a really important element so we've written a chapter on that as well so um, there's information about the book uh, on our website if you go to uh, singup.org uh, forward slash singing school handbook um, and what we're going to talk about this evening is really what it means to these two schools and these two teachers for their schools to be singing schools because they are both very definitely uh, singing schools and have been for some time so they're going to help us by talking to us about how they went on that journey with their school and what it means to their school, their pupils, their teaching colleagues uh, to be part of that. So uh, first of all, um, let's start by thinking about what uh, being a singing school means in the context of each of your schools. So let's start with Amanda, if that's mm -hmm. all right. And maybe you could tell us a little bit about you know, as, as head teacher at your school, um, why is it a priority for you, for your school, for your school to be doing what was singing? And what do you think it means to your colleagues and the pupils? So I would say our school, the singing school, is always a very happy school. It's a very inclusive school. Um, and I think visitors walk into our school and immediately comment on feeling the ethos of the school through the singing. Yeah. Um, the singing is absolutely at the heart of everything that we do. Um, so we don't just sing for singing sake in assembly, we actually use it to enrich the full curriculum. Uh, so that's curriculum regarding the subject areas, but also as in well-being and just generally that enjoyment factor so children uh, can participate and, and enjoy singing and feel good about themselves. Mm -hmm. And what made you decide that that was an important thing in your school to begin with? Um, well, I suppose I've always had the passion and belief I know what music brings to myself and also to children, but I was extremely fortunate um, in the post that I was appointed to at Seton Sluice First School and the head teacher at the time, um, was she had a vision and she was very keen for me to be part of that vision to develop the school into a singing school. And when we unpick that, um, and I said to her, what did that vision look like? It was it was all about using the singing to complement the routines throughout the school, mm -hmm. thinking about the transitions between the lessons and moving from classroom into the hall, thinking about lining up in the playground, tidying up at the end of the day. Um, and Jill, the head teacher at the time, was very keen to um, in, implement that into my performance management targets, okay. which was an absolute dream of a performance <laughs> management target. Um, so I set about working with the children to create some of these routine songs. Um, and that's that's how, you know, when people walk through the school, they can feel you know, the way that it is throughout school. And it's very much led by the children. It's not, we, yes, all of the teachers are involved in it, but the children very much take ownership of that. Yeah, yeah. And what do you think so, motivated your head teacher originally? What, why did she have that vision? I think she just heard and heard and read about it, and yeah. it was very much. I know when I went for the job straight away, it was very clear that the children loved to sing. Mm -hmm. um, just by chance, when I went for the job, um, I looked at the school values and composed a song that was based on the school values and presented that to the uh, school council, and it just matched with mm -hmm. the vision of the head teacher yeah. at the school at the time mm -hmm. um, and we've just continued to grow and grow and it's made the school what it is really yeah yeah so oh, that's great yeah and uh so bethan at, at your school what does what does being a singing school do you think mean in, in that context i think it's giving the status to singing that you would give to your english lessons and your maths lessons mm -hmm. you know they, it has the same importance and it's about introducing songs and um, making sure that the teachers are involved as well as the children you know so that the children have role models or their children their teachers are singing so they sing with them mm -hmm. um, and singing starts right from the bottom of the school up to the top of the school so it's a singing school all the time mm -hmm. wherever you are within the school in terms of your your age mm -hmm. so picking appropriate songs for children um, in the early years and then 
moving and developing the voice as you go through the school. Mm. So by the time you've got children in year five and six, all those skills of singing, listening, being able to pick up tunes, things just sort of come quite quite naturally. So it's really nice to have that sense of um, the progression moving through the school. Because you have that vision, you know, from yeah. when they come in to when they actually move on. Do you, do you ever get any resistance from the pupils to singing? Do any of them seem to be a bit shy or yes. shyness, yeah. you know, and oh, I don't want to sing, it isn't cool. Mm. But I think the way forward is to just let them join in when they're ready. You know, I, I don't think, you know, I, th I think sometimes you can encourage people to in, in, engage. Sometimes you have, to, you can see the ones that actually just need to sort of mumble and join in a little bit. Mm. And those people who are sort of actively saying, I'm not going to join in, and then maybe having a quiet word with them at another time, maybe yeah. and just saying, come on, you know, we want you to be part of this as well. Yeah. But I think it's about um, showing that you're enjoying it and bringing them with you yeah. on that mm -hmm. journey. Yeah. yeah, And then thinking, okay, so what songs would you like to sing as well with children? If, if you think that, you know, what you've chosen maybe they don't like it mm -hmm. but often you know sometimes I'll pick a song and I think oh I'm not, I'm not sure they're gonna like this and they love it and then I'll pick something else that I think they're gonna love and it doesn't go down so well mm -hmm. you know it's it's trial and error like everything isn't it yeah so what would you say is the kind of biggest benefit to your school of, of having singing at the heart of it I think it's just great for everything you know I, I put lots of words down when I was thinking about these questions but I was thinking about about being a sense of community that this is something we do all together um, but also it's about um, confidence about you know if you stand well you sing well but if you if you stand with with confidence you, I we sort of feel that the children can walk into rooms mm -hmm. and be confident because they know how to stand and to sing mm -hmm. and you know little things like that or they can speak clearly because they've learned how to sing clearly. Mm. You know, it's giving them a voice. Mm. So thing, just things like that that maybe you wouldn't have thought of. Mm. Mm. But it's all those skills of... I think for us, um, a lot of it goes back to memories and creating memories. So yeah. we, talk, we talk a lot about um, our experiences as children and we often say to the children who may be implying that they don't want to join in, you look back on these days and these are these are the experiences that you remember. You'll remember standing, performing, singing the songs. And I think it breaks down the barriers between children and the staff, especially if they're prepared to stand up and have fun with the children as mm -hmm. well. Um, they're really popular songs, you know, where it's sort of the yeah. tongue twisters and the raps and things. Um, and the children, there's nothing they like more than to see the staff joining in and having fun. Mm. I know some of our staff have performed for 12 days of Christmas and things like that. <laughs> and um, the children love it. They love to see the staff standing at the front and just joining mm. in and having some fun with them as well. well and I think modelling that kind of enjoyment of the singing and willingness to get involved from the staff is so important yeah. for the children to see as well, isn't it? Because yeah. if the staff aren't going to do it, yeah, then, you know, and it seems like it's you know, you can opt in and out, mm -hmm. um, then that's, you know, the, the children are going to think that that's the case as well. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, so how did you personally get started uh, on your singing journey? I'm going to direct this one to Beth first. <laughs> well, I think I've always been a singer and I've always been, wherever I've gone, I've always done music. I obviously went to college and did a teaching degree, but with a music specialist. And then I found that when I went into schools, as soon as they knew that you had a music specialism, mm -hmm. you were then, all right, can we sing? Can you play the piano? So you could see that there was a need and people wanted that, but they didn't always have that expertise within their schools. Mm -hmm. So when I went to my first school, I started singing with, with my class, which then very quickly became singing with that part of the school. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the year six teachers came down and said, how do you fancy singing with our children and we'll come and cover you and so in my sort of NQT year mm. I was starting to develop the singing yeah across the school 
And then, of course, you have to start, you know, I had a lot of support from other teachers on how to think about a strategy for how do I want to make this work, you know, and what do I choose for children who are five, and what do I choose for children maybe who are 11, you know, and what songs can we all sing together, but then what songs to develop the voices. Yeah. So it was just, it was a fairly quick thing, but I, I was very grateful that I had a school that were very supportive, a head teacher that just wanted it to happen and was willing to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And lots of colleagues who were encouraging and happy to come into the sessions and to join in. And it very quickly became established that singing time was a singing lesson and you came with your children and you learned with the children. So everybody was singing. Yeah. So it was never seen as, well, we'll go out and do our PPA cover, you know, while you sing with the children. It, it was always very much, this is for everybody and everybody sings. So I'm, I'm just anticipating one of the questions that I think we <clears throat> might get because, you know, quite often we hear from teachers and from schools that, you know, well, this is all very well where you've got a really supportive head or maybe you've got a, a pre-existing culture of singing in the school that you're coming into, you've got something to build on. It might be an unfair question, but you know, would you, would you, have you got any advice that you would give to teachers who are in a situation where perhaps they haven't got a head who's crazy about the idea of singing and they've got to try and win them over and convince them that it's going to be um, a really positive thing for the school? I think that it, it comes directly from the children and also the response of the parents. Yeah. So I think music's very powerful and if they're performing, you can see the impact that it has on the children and the people who are there mm. with them, watching them. And I think that feedback coming back to the head teacher is always really very important and it kind of drives mm. things um, ahead in the future as well. Yeah, I think I agree. It is a lot more difficult if a head teacher's got different priorities. Mm. Um, and all I would say is just don't give up, <laughs> um, because it is it's it's very powerful and it does it has a real impact on the whole atmosphere within the school. Yeah, and I think you know if you've got a singer, I mean that's just amazing, isn't it? Because mm. in your classroom, two minutes. You can just put a, a song on at the end of a session, just before the end of the school day. You, you know, choose something, just pick anything and play it and get the children thinking about it. You know, choose something that goes with your topic. So, you know, that's a, that's a starting point. Yeah. You know. I mean, the advice we tend to give is um, really the, the, the children singing and their enjoyment of the singing will speak for itself. So kind of almost before you try to persuade your head teacher, just get started, get some singing going, get some enthusiasm going, even as, if it's with a, a smaller group of children to start with who've mm -hmm. chosen to take part in some singing. Because as soon as you get something up and mm -hmm. running, um, it kind of speaks for itself. And, and it's really I think involvement in the community as well. Yeah. So the more involvement within the community, so um, our children will go out and we'll sing and the churches will support um, different festivals. We'll team up with some of the schools from the local area as well. And I think once the whole community start commenting on the impact and the children and the enjoyment factor and how lucky it was, mm. that has to come back mm. and, you know, oh, it reflects positively yeah, on the, the school. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so what tips would you give to other schools and teachers wanting to become a singing school how, in terms of getting started or moving forward with their singing school journey? I would, I would advise to get a balance of taking the lead. I think a lot of teachers are very happy for somebody who has that confidence factor and a little bit of specialism to take the lead initially. Um, but then very much invo involve everyone and include everybody and, and say to people how, you know, how could we support certain curriculum areas? For example, this year we've brought French um, higher up on the curriculum, so thinking about what we can do across the school to um, right. hit the MFL curriculum yeah. and things like that. Um, and when we have whole school singing, I'm very passionate that it's not just a case of me being at the front um, directing whatever we're, we're going to be singing and deciding on the song choice and giving responsibility to other members of staff and to the children and then bringing their ideas to the table as well. Mm -hmm. um, and showing that it's not necessarily um, important for me to be stood at the piano playing the piano we can do 
lots of brilliant songs without an accompaniment. You can use sing up, mm. we can do rounds, we can achieve really great effects. Yeah. Um, and it's accessible to everybody, everybody can do it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean I, I agree with all of all of that. And um it's about picking, you know, seeing the staff that you can quickly get to come and do things with you because they have the they have confidence mm. um, and if you do part singing you know you are then helping uh, but they are also helping groups and, yeah. and that's really good but also to get the children mm -hmm. I like to try and get the children up even when they're in the nursery get them to lead something so I'll go and sit with the other children and they'll be up the front and reading mm -hmm. um, and you can spot the ones that are going to be able to come up and do that straight away. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, this can be quite a nice leadership role for them if they get that opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and something that they can shine at. You know, very often teachers say to us, "It's great because sometimes you can find you know a child who perhaps is struggling in other areas mm -hmm. of their school life. Perhaps they're struggling a little bit academically, or they're struggling to fit in, uh, whatever it might be. But then you know they 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 discover that they can sing, or they start developing the singing voice yeah. and that's their thing that, mm -hmm. that gives them an identity and that they can shine at and it gives them a kind of a role in the school, which mm -hmm. can be really nice. Yeah. And uh, I think also to make, a, to make a point in saying that it's not just the teaching staff. Um, we have two teaching assistants who come along to choir mm -hmm. every week and they've chosen to do that because they enjoy to sing as well. Yeah. And involving lunchtime staff, as many, as many of, the, of the staff that you can involve for better reason. Yeah. One of the things we talk about in the book is um, uh, trying to embed the uh, the outcomes you're looking for with your singing into like uh, the school development plans. Any any kind of st strategy documents you've got in your school. So if your school, uh, you know, all schools have particular targets they want to hit, or they've got particular issues they want to address. So whether that's about inclusion or it's about behaviour um, or it's about attendance, you know, if you can find ways of saying well actually there's this singing project that we could get going that could help address those particular issues yeah. mm -hmm. and you know working with the school leadership team and the head to to, mm -hmm. to really explore how singing doesn't have to just be an extra thing that you're adding on that's mm -hmm. just for its own sake although of course it's important for that as well but because it can help with all these other things to really kind of embed it in those plans as well um, we find it very, it's very it's a it's a powerful tool for thinking about aspirations mm. as well. And within our school partnership, um, we'll have an agreed we'll we'll perhaps do a singing project and we'll have an agreed theme. So last year it was all about positivity. This year it's about aspirations. So sometimes it's nice to have a common theme mm. and then use that to influence your repertoire mm. as well. Mm. And um, that brings an extra layer of meaning and mm. you know. To, to the performance as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so uh, the next question I wanted to ask you is about singing leadership. Um, so as I've, I've said, we've got a, a chapter in the book that's all about singing leadership. And um, when, I mean, right from the early days of Sing Up, we, uh, we identified that the, the, uh, the effectiveness of Sing Up's work and the reach we were going to have and the quality of the singing that was going to happen was only ever going to be as good as the skills that the singing leaders would have. So we've always really focused on supporting teachers who perhaps don't have a music background, don't have a music mm. specialism, don't feel mm. very confident in their musical ability or even their singing voice, to start to develop some skills and some confidence and to see how they can develop their, their vocal leadership themselves. And um, one of the things we developed was a, a set of 10 principles um, uh, we call them the principles of quality vocal leadership. It's now called the vocal leader checklist, which is a little more snappy. Um, and we deliberately developed that to be uh, a, a list of qualities, if you like, um, rather than activities, a list of qualities that uh, would be familiar to, to most teachers because they were things like being engaging, being a good communicator, uh, being creative. I mean, there are some that are specific to music. Um, so thinking about the different types of singing leadership that are needed in your school and and how teachers who perhaps are non-music specialists are supported to, to, to lead some singing themselves. Mm -hmm. um, are there any particular learnings that you've had in, in your schools that you'd like to share? Hmm. 
It's quite a hard question. <laughs> um, so how do you encourage teachers uh, teachers on the, on the staff with you to lead singing. to lead some singing even in a small I way i think just general principles of the eye contact counting in mm. even things like how many beats to count in and yeah. talking about the strong beats and um following signals even you know stop signals getting them to join in yeah. hand signals and things as well i think a lot of it we'll do together and they'll pick up Right. as well yeah. as we're doing it um but i think generally with young children in particular i think the elements of counting them in and keeping them in time and thinking about the pulse and, and that type of thing yeah there's a really simple thing that we always say that um just to, just so that the children start at, at the same time on the same notes and they've got an idea of the pulse we always just say take the starting note mm. and then just sing uh one two and off we go yeah. and then you're, you've you've set up the yeah. so they know what pitch to aim for yes. they know when to start and they know what pulse because otherwise you can end up with this kind of drifting yeah. in yeah. <laughs> well when we used ex cathedra and the singing playground oh, yes, they great. came in and worked with staff so that was one way to help staff to become more confident to yeah. have a goal and of course that's one of the things that they teach yes is, you know that, definitely yeah um, doesn't always stick with everybody but yeah. Um, yeah but I think if you can even with the music hub um, get somebody to come in some sometimes helps you know that that's a help for somebody who's starting off if there's a school and they're starting off on their journey and they're thinking how am I going to support people and I'm a class teacher myself and haven't got time mm. the music hub can usually you know support in some way mm -hmm. absolutely i think our staff certainly find when we're using the sing up website the echo tracks oh yeah are a great tool as well yeah so if they're wanting to break the songs down and and, and go slower and, yeah. and sort of hone in on certain yes. parts of the melody yeah. the echo tracks are perfect for doing that as well and again that's comforting to them if they're lacking the confidence to have a recorded voice singing along with them as well at the same time yeah and I suppose it also teaches you the principle that um, a really good way to learn by rote is to do kind of my turn, your turn thing, yeah, singing yeah. a short phrase, mm -hmm, my mm -hmm. turn, and then they sing it back. Mm -hmm. So for the teacher as well as the pupil, mm -hmm. using the echo tracks is mm -hmm. kind of way of learning that that's, that's just a good way of learning. Yeah, and even links to literacy. So when you're thinking about the rhythm and fitting the words and actually sounding out the syllables and talking through the lyrics and just linking it as much as, as you can, really. Mm. So the ex cathedral project did they do this their singing playgrounds project with you yes yeah yeah and what did the school gain from that i think um a bank of songs yeah that they knew really well themselves really so nice, yeah. lots of classes then were doing those songs mm. within their classrooms um and being outside i mean the singing outside we sometimes you know we don't do it as much as we did yeah but if 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 somebody starts up one one of those playground songs now, yeah, then people can join in, and we use them within our singing time. Nice, you know, yeah. insight. Um, it was a lovely way of bringing the school together. Yeah, because they did some big singing sessions with the whole school to oh, sort right. of kickstart the project, which mm -hmm. was nice. Um, and it's it was nice for me because. I did a lot of singing on my own, whereas they come as a team of three or four. Yeah, brilliant. And they have yeah. jazzy piano players, you know, and it really sort of, you know, you felt that the school was really rocking, you know. Yeah. yeah. And, that, and I think that's nice sometimes to have something coming in, mm -hmm. just that you can be part of what's going on as well, rather than you were always delivering. Yeah. And you were mm -hmm. always doing so. Otherwise, it's always all it on you. It was lovely to have that coming in. Yeah sort of refreshed me as well yeah of course yeah great. yeah well, it's always great isn't it to get new ideas from from other yes. people and it refreshes I think your it's often, you need somebody to say this is a brilliant project to have because sometimes yeah. sometimes you can be a little bit disappointed because you you aren't sure what is yeah. coming mm. but um you know they have been well we had seen them at um, a conference yeah we thought yeah we've got to get these yeah yeah. yeah yeah great great um so, what role does um, good vocal health play, do you think, in your work as a singing leader and as a teacher? I'm asking that because we've made a big thing about vocal health in the book um, and actually throughout our, our work uh, in Sing Up, because 
you know, for us really, it's the starting point. You've got to look after the the instruments, yeah. and, you know, and it because it is part of our bodies. You know, there's all kinds of health things that you have to think about in relation mm -hmm. to that. But particularly with young voices, it's part of our responsibility to make sure that the children learn how to look after their voices because you know, mm -hmm. that will set them up for life. But also as teachers, you're using your voice all the time, and teachers very often, uh, you know, have very high rates of reporting yes. vocal health problems and you know, very often need to see um, uh, specialists about it so i'm just wondering um for your school you know how do you how do you how do you approach that how, how do you we use that? we use music and singing very much um as part of behavior management so you'll rarely walk around the school and hear people having to raise their voice or shout um it's a calm atmosphere anyway it's a calm creative an, an environment but there's a lot of um, call and response there's a lot of sort of singing to control the behavior as well mm. and again that instills a lot of positivity yeah um, at the beginning of singing practices we always talk about how to sit how to breathe um, and the younger children do have a tendency to over over shout yes yeah. they think good singing is all about getting louder and louder and sometimes it you know it, it can sound pretty awful if, if they're mm -hmm. shouting the words so we do quite a lot of work on what good singing actually sounds like and practicing and thinking about controlling our breathing as well. Very good. Yeah. Yeah, we certainly talk about posture and yeah. you know, we do this right, I'm watching telly, uh, yeah. I'm ready for singing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm watching telly, I'm ready for singing. And standing up for singing and, and a bright face and yes. you know, if we're gonna do like that, we're gonna sound like that. Whereas if you're like that. So it's all about, you know. These are the these are the tricks that get mm -hmm. the love, you know. I want to hear your beautiful voices, mm -hmm. and I will stop as well with even with the little ones. I'll just stop and I go. What am I going to say? We were shouting, you know. Mm -hmm. So yes. they they start to hear them hear it for themselves as yes. well, and uh, you know, talking about and warming up and you know, doing some little silly warm up songs and mm -hmm. just to and just different there. ways of using their voice yes. as well so you know a bit of fun whispering doing different types of voices you're saying about a sleepy voice a high pitch voice yes. a low voice yeah, and all that other voices as well. baby yeah. bear's voice mommy bear's voice, you know all that yeah 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 because i mean a big part of what you can do as vocal leaders is start to get the pupils to really listen to what they're producing and to be kind of listening for themselves to how they can improve and you know pre like you said preempting the question or the, or the comment that you're going to make yes. and be constantly kind of thinking to themselves oh how could we make this sound better am i doing the thing that i was asked to do did i get quieter at the moment when i was supposed to get quieter those kinds of things and also you know doing the articulation mm -hmm. and trying to get them to sing things fast mm -hmm. and they straight away go loud mm -hmm. so yeah. no i want i want i want it fast but i want it very really quiet mm -hmm. yes. And trying to and talking about the gym, you know, as your your tongue and your teeth and your lips. Yes, it's like, you know, singing is like a training for your, you know, a gym training. Yeah. For your for your mouth. Yeah. Um, yes, and trying to get them and and talking about not mumbling. Yes. You know, um, and saying the words very clearly. We we also chant the words and then sing the words. Oh, right, yeah. So we get the words in our head first. You know, we'll and we read read the words. So mm -hmm. you know, there's that timing of read the word, and then articulate the words, and then sing the words. Yeah. And even when they're singing, their mouth moves in a different way to when they're just talking. Yes. And pointing that out to the children and letting them hear the effect of changing their mouth position and actually pronouncing the words more clearly yeah. as well. I think mm. just not taking it all for granted and being quite explicit in yes. teaching those techniques. Yeah. And a high expectation, you know, oh no, that that, that wasn't good enough. Come yeah. on. Yeah. You can do better than that. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, let's just, you know, I often say, I'm really fussy. You, you know I'm fussy. I need it to, you know. Raise the bar. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's good. And obviously so much of um, I'm just getting... Them. Yeah, yeah water, I have water, yeah. you know, I always have water on my piano. Yeah. Drinking. Yeah. yeah. Talk to, to, to them. Not that they bring drinks into the singing lessons, but you know, when they Stay go back hydrated. to class. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that teachers as well. You know, yes. You need to tell teachers <laughs> that all the time, you know. Absolutely. We're actually thinking about what I was saying about teachers and their and their own vocal health. You know, one of the things teachers say to us is, you know, it's it's helped me a lot just to 
really think about how I'm using my voice in the classroom because I kept losing my voice, particularly in the winter when you know people mm -hmm. get colds and things. But actually, you know, instead of raising your voice in the classroom, not well, you should be doing that anyway, but instead of doing that, you can get attention by singing. You know, and, and then you're you're not going to damage your voice. You're not going to strain your voice. You know, you can you can immediately get the class to pay attention to what you're what you're wanting to communicate to them that way. So it can be very very very. Yes, yeah, making up those songs again. <laughs> listen, listen, I need to tell you something. I have a question here. So uh, we have a question from Kingsley Clennell White, who has already got the book. Goodness me, that was a good off remark. Haven't read it yet, and I'm literally on my way out of the door, but can't wait to use it. Saying, I have a school of children whose family circumstances place art and music very low on their priorities. Have you got any tips? Hmm. That's very sad. <laughs> I think you That's, do it, don't you? And you yeah. bring, you invite the parents in, and it just shows, doesn't it? What, and so just amazing. get on with it anyway. I, yes, and do it. Demonstrate. And, yeah, bring the bring the parents in and say, look at your look at what your children have just been. I suppose you know, the the enthusiasm generated as well by the arts mm. um, and trying to persuade and show through the evidence of the art and the music produced how you're hitting the learning of the other curriculum areas as mm -hmm. well so you can actually um you know there's some very le challenging learning will take place through the arts it's not just strictly about teaching the english maths and you know the more academic subjects that's where you deeper thinking and your problem solving and all of those deeper responses come mm -hmm. from so i suppose it's just educating the parents as to it's not just a case of singing and drawing pictures. Yeah. It's taking learning to a deeper level, isn't it? Yeah. And I, I, mm -hmm. like we said, I'm a big believer in just uh, getting a performance up and running, mm -hmm. putting the, the, the kids up there and getting them to do it because the children will enjoy it so much. They'll get so much joy from it. And no parent is going to sit in that room and think, well, that mm -hmm. was a bad thing that my child Possibly, did I'm that. just thinking from experience in our school, when we've had problems um, convincing parents of something being a good idea, we've invited parents in. Yeah. So involving them in um, art experiences and the music making experiences. When we had our sing up day last year, we had a full family sing. Lovely. So getting people in and all the children were sat in the middle and all of the adults um, we sat around the edge joining in with us so mm. I think possibly uh, having an open door policy and getting the mm. parents and the families into yeah. school to see the evidence rather than just telling them yeah via looking at the at the website and you yeah. know writing letters let them come in and get the feel feel of how you know what it's like to have that in the school and perhaps in what you're saying not always just at performance moments but an earlier stage in the process yeah. so they can be yeah. part of the Possible but learning. just come into like a singing lesson or a singing yeah. assembly, singing you know, assembly. not a performance, yeah. just come in and, and see what we do. Yeah. At yeah. the end of our school day we've had um, busking sessions as well, so that's a perfect point in the day when parents are all picking the children up from school. If you have a group of children all singing and oh, they enjoy so nice them, so they aren't having to come in especially for something. No. Anyway. So you've kind of captured them at the end of the day. <laughs> you've tricked them <laughs> into hearing um, the singing and the music and they can see the enjoyment um, on, on the faces of the children. That's so and it's, a, it's a nice thing just yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah. Perhaps on a Friday at the end of the week to do something like That's that. That's a really nice idea. I like that one. Um, so the next question is about inclusion. Uh, thinking of inclusion in the broadest sense. So um, what I'm going to ask you is what inclusion challenges each of your schools have and how you make sure all pupils are included in singing at school. Um, but more widely than that, uh, how singing helps with dealing with inclusion challenges. I'm going to ask that one to Bethan first. Well, everyone sings, so that's, you know, everybody comes into singing. And we have children at our school, we have children with, with Downs, and they come in and it's been really good for those children when they're developing their voices to help them develop their speaking um, and they've learned songs, you know, that they can just then sing and they often sing around the school when you hear them. Um, we have children too that come 
and they want to play the piano if they want to come and play when I'm playing and mm. they'll just sort of pick out a few notes and that's fine but um, because we're in an in inclusive school and our children are aware of the children that are in their class who have additional needs mm. that if there's anybody calling out or singing in a slightly different sounding voice or sounding very different our children just let you know don't 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 mind that and they know that that's just the way that that person is expressing themselves mm. and that's fine and i think that that's fine too mm. so they just come into the session and they take part at their level mm. and what they can get out of it and sometimes they they don't stay for the whole session mm. sometimes they do depending on what their one-to-one Mm -hmm. uh, support things but mm -hmm. yeah and how about inclusion in terms of in a, in a kind of broader sense around so for example like I was saying before about perhaps the children who are struggling to settle or you know that don't maybe don't really feel part of the fabric of the school school community to begin with do you think have you seen ways in which involving them in the singing can help with that I think you can sometimes identify there are other issues that children have if they mm. come into, you know, if they're quite passive and they're just mm. listening, you know, there might be some other issue for them. Mm. So that's a way, you know, you might notice those children, they don't mm. really sing, they just come and they just listen. Mm. And I mean, you'd have to pick that up at another point, but mm. um, I think it's okay as well for mm. some children, you know, especially lower down the school mm. when they're sort of just getting used to school and they're getting used to the routines mm. some of them are just listening and taking it all in mm. and let them come to it when they're ready we want yeah. to force people into you know come on you love, come and try and see yeah. some certainly with younger children um i allow them to just be there and mm. join in when they're ready yes yeah. further up the school that you'd be looking for engagement with all you know Mm -hmm. most of the children yeah we yeah. have within one class we have three children with hearing aids okay so um we're very fortunate one of our governors um is specialized in makaton signing oh, so okay. she volunteered um to come in and develop a makaton singing group great so that works really well and that is always um one of the one feature of our singing assemblies each week so we have playground singing we have whole school singing and then we also have makaton singing um, and we have Makaton singing leaders who have come out to the front and they will then teach the whole school the song that they've learnt in the session. Mm -hmm. um, when they've been working with um, our governor or our higher level teaching assistant who also takes the lead on that as well. So that's a really nice mm -hmm. way of um, including the children who struggle with their communication. Uh, but in general, we, we tend to have a lot of actions yeah. accompanying, yeah. accompanying yeah, the words as well. So the from time. the point of view of um, memory and concentration yes. and and those type of skills to engage a wider, mm. a wider group of children. It also gets you feeling the song, feeling mm. the rhythm, yeah. you know, having actions mm. that are yeah. quite sort of specific yeah. Yeah. with the rhythm. And just the children to feel your body moves. are great at making up their yes. own actions yeah. as well. And that's a really nice opportunity, like you were saying, um, of giving them a moment to shine. If they've got an action, getting them out to the front. And it's quite empowering for them to then teach their actions mm -hmm. yeah. to the rest of the yeah. school. So and those what, actions what stick. Action shall we put with that yeah. line? I can't think of one. Or yeah. I yeah. usually put, I'll put in something and they say, oh, I can't remember what the, the action. What's, what's the action? Oh yeah, we can do this. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, so how do you uh, go about fostering a culture of listening to and improving the singing in your school with your pupils and with other staff? So this is really kind of what I was saying, touching what I was saying earlier around how do you encourage the pupils to really be starting to think about perhaps a little bit later on in years four, five, and six, mm -hmm. uh, we're really starting to listen to the singing themselves and thinking about how they can improve it. We've actually recorded, um, mm -hmm. thinking about some of the performances, we recorded the children, not just thinking about their voices, thinking about the performance skills as well. Um, but through recording them, they can then listen back yeah. and hear how they actually sound. Yeah. And then we can talk about it and refine and improve. Mm -hmm. um, and I think quite often, if I hear or if staff hear them doing something, maybe pronouncing a word 
I'm thinking in particular coming from the north of England, um, we will have certain words which are quite pronounced with the Geordie accent <laughs> and it's just taking them back and actually demonstrating how that word sounds so they can hear it. Mm. Um, and so long as they don't think it's even more of a joke and then make it even more, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> the they generally will take that on board and they'll they'll, they'll adapt and they'll, they'll do better with it. Right. Um, so I think it's just being, like you were saying, Bethan, about having high expectations. Yeah. Um, not just saying, wow, that was great, you mm -hmm. know, all of the time, what a brilliant performance. Mm -hmm. It's about making them realize that they can actually do even better mm -hmm. when it comes to the quality of the singing. And I think if you've got a safe space and you've developed that, you can have half the class singing and half of them listening, yes. yeah. which we've done a little bit of. And also if you do part singing, they're having to be listening a little bit yes. to the other ones. So that's, that's quite nice mm -hmm. yeah, um, ways of doing that. And what kinds of things are you uh, telling them to listen for with the group who are listening? Well, we, we'd have done a little bit about maybe we were linking two notes, you know, to make a nice smooth ending. Mm -hmm. You know, does it sound jumpy? Does it sound smooth? Can you hear the words? Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think quite often end sounds as well, mm -hmm. the end sounds of words mm -hmm. and if, uh, getting them to listen back. Mm -hmm. So, for example, the word light, mm -hmm. you know, making sure they get a nice clear ending to the word as well. Mm -hmm. um, and they and don't realise they're doing it a lot of the no, time, do they? No. And does it sound bright and energetic, you mm -hmm. know, or does it sound a bit dull, you know, mm -hmm. those sorts of, sorts of things. And sometimes modelling that. So um, sometimes the children have very breathy voices, you know, mm -hmm. they, they are getting enough sound coming out. Mm -hmm. So trying to model that. Can you hear me singing with a very breathy sound now listen to what i want to hear i want to hear that sound coming out of the breath mm -hmm. that type of thing and do you find that they're able to pick that up by mimicking or do you, do you need to give them any kind of other technical advice or does it normally just come by listening because yeah. singing is one of those things and that you've got to sort of get um you you can sometimes give them a visual like you know my singing teacher used to go like that <laughs> yeah. sort of thing. yes i know what you mean yes but, yeah you know no. because the instrument's all inside yes. so you can't kind of so go you have to have pictures yeah. yes you have and that's why you know you say try and keep you know that sort of lifted yeah to get that right i remember i used to say you know smile but actually smile is wrong yeah you know so we changed that yeah it's I think about it's, that just yeah. bright eyes you combination know, bright. of them looking listening looking at your actions mm -hmm. talking about things yeah. mm -hmm. as well isn't it mm -hmm. uh so we've got a couple of other questions here uh mm -hmm. right so question from sophie uh, what do you suggest for children who consistently don't pitch and sing in unison? I find them to be quite enthusiastic and I really want to help them. Hang on, there might be more of this. I really want to help them. No, that was it. Um, so I think she means that they're unable to kind of pitch consistently in the same place. Mm -hmm. So getting them started perhaps mm. in the right key. Mm. Um, and little chunks, you know, I sing, you yeah. sing. Mm. You just... Mod, you know, modelling it back and forth a little bit. Mm -hmm. And even picking out one particular note mm -hmm. that we're seeing, because often it's just a couple of the tones, isn't it, that seems yeah, to not be a particular jump. Or... So picking out a particular pitch that comes up mm -hmm. more regularly mm -hmm. and singing that note and getting them to sing it back mm -hmm. and then singing it again mm -hmm. and getting them to sing it back and seeing if they can hear. I'm doing well, a little bit of that really straightforward, simple jumps mm. that you know la, 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 la. Mm. you know can they do that mm. before you try and stretch them with something that's a little bit more complicated mm. it's la, difficult la, la, isn't it because you don't want yeah, to you not, don't know where they you are. don't want to knock their confidence either if they're enthusiastic yeah i think we can all think about children like this in our school <laughs> um who are joining in enthusiastically and not necessarily have the most tuneful of voices no. i think possibly i would be advising them to quieten a little bit mm. and to try and be a bit more aware of what they can hear around them because mm. I tend to find with those type of children in our school they're really just focusing on themselves yes. and they're singing singing just and it's all about themselves but yes. if they actually quieten their voice a bit and they 
they listen to the children around them mm. that will help too mm. yeah we, and we talk about blending when you when you're singing with a group you have to blend mm -hmm. you have to be listening to people around you and try and make your sound like theirs and they make their sound like yours because you it, it, i found that if, if you get because it wants like one voice you, yeah that's what you, we if talk you get about. them to achieve that just even momentarily they come oh right that's what it, that's what it is because mm -hmm. the minute that it's the same the same note the right note yeah and it's blended mm -hmm. you can hear it but um I, I i have this a bit with my um with my son who's uh he's 15 now so his voice has settled a bit when he was his voice was changing mm -hmm. and uh, he had a very narrow range for that period of time and just getting him to pitch uh consistently even within that narrow range it, it took quite a lot of <laughs> quite a lot of work and patience but once he got it, it was like, oh a kind of light bulb went on it's ah like, oh, that's what it should be sounding like you know mm. my voice internally should be sounding like this in relation to the note that i'm trying to sing with so i think yeah just persist maybe um so there's another there's a comment and i think they're both comments actually rather than a question so this is from holly clark hi holly i know holly uh, so Holly says, um, I've learnt uh, British Sign Language, BSL Sign Language. So we all sing and sign the songs we learn. The whole school does it to include the hearing impaired pupils we have. That's yeah. lovely. Um, and she says, it also has the added benefit of it helping everyone to learn the words from memory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, plus in a performance, it means I can give them a secret sign language signal to cue them into the next word. It's helpful for everyone, especially staff. What a good idea. Um, brilliant. So uh, we've got about 10 minutes left. Um, I have two more questions and then I think we'll do a little rounding up. Um, so where do you two go for support or advice if and when you need it? I mean, you're both very experienced and been doing your thing for a while, but if you need a little refresher or colleagues, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, who are similar sort of, you know, within different schools, colleagues in different schools, the yeah. hub, Talk yes. to the hub. Yeah. I found yeah. it really reassuring <laughs> to link up with other music yes. teachers within yes. our partnership as mm. well. Mm. Um, so within and the that's, music education hub. Yeah, and that's group. another really great thing about singing. It can bring you together. Um, we've talked about how sometimes it can be quite an isolated role being mm. that music teacher. Yes. And it's really reassuring to um, meet up with other people and to share experiences and to talk about what's going well and Get ideas from each other really um and i you know i'm i'm not the type of person who for one minute thinks i've got all of the answers at all we're all constantly learning and can yeah. learn a lot from each other all Definitely. of the time yeah mm. and i think that's an important message that you have to give to the children as well mm. yes mm. i think um and it's always good to share with other people so mm -hmm. i've always tried to um link up with other teachers and and do shared work yeah, so we might learn the same songs mm -hmm. within our schools, but then we'll join up together oh. and do something together. Yeah, um, which is always nice. Yeah, great. Um, and then the last question is really about your own senior school journey. So you've you've been doing this for ages, but it is a kind of constantly evolving thing. So what's next for you in your school with your senior school journey? What are your well, ambitions or goals? Um, in the summer, I got all the staff to sing to to the children at the end of term and we have done some staff singing in the past but it had sort of dropped off the radar a little bit and I basically I sort of set the challenge that I would get them to sing I would get them to perform something with just two sessions two two little lessons mini lessons because you know nobody's got time to do extra things so we've got I've got to do something now for, for Christmas so that they can sing too. So that's for the staff. And um, I'm trying to get every teacher to sign up to sing up. I haven't, exactly, I haven't got everybody signed up yet. Um, so I want to hear sing up in every classroom. I hear it in lots of classrooms, but I want to hear it in every classroom. So that's my little Great. challenge for the next half term. I suppose our journey is we're very lucky because we do have sing up right the way throughout the school and um, it's well embedded within the school and following our platinum award we had a whole 
um, partnership singing event mm -hmm. at the local theatre, um, which was called Singing Spread Sunshine. And that was a really lovely, lovely event, bringing everyone together. Um, and we thought it was a really good um, opportunity to get all of the children on the stage and they performed with a live band. Oh, great, yeah. So we had um, a very talented, lovely, accommodating peripatetic teacher who got together a band um, and the children chose some songs. We decided on some shared songs, like you were saying, yeah. and they all performed. And that's going to be an annual event now. Mm. So I think from our point of view, it's not just about what happens within the school. It's about the journey afterwards as well. And we don't just want it to be the experience um, of what the children within our school get. It's about giving them that start and it continuing as they move on to the middle school and then up to the high school as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, getting the full yes. package. Yeah. And again, um, sharing the enthusiasm with the staff yeah. as well, yeah. which I think we're getting there with. <laughs> so, <laughs> brilliant, that sounds great. So I think that's probably, unless we've got any more questions, I don't think we have, but I think that probably brings us to the end. So thank you very much for watching. Um, you're very welcome to keep sending your questions to us uh, for us to answer, and we'll, we'll do that by email tomorrow. Um, uh, if you don't already, please make sure you like our Facebook page to make sure you get notified about future events. And uh, do go onto the SingUp website and have a look at the information about the Singing School Handbook at singup.org forward slash singing school handbook. Thank you very much for joining us this evening, and I hope you uh, see us again soon.